quote. <laughs> they got like a mini version of the 13. You got a mini, a regular, and a max. Yeah. Of the 13 now, which is crazy. I think they have that for, they do, they had it for the 12, the 12 too. too. They had a mini 12. Yep. Okay. So we, uh, wait, wait, I went, wait. start over. I've got Brendan here. He's hiding over here doing the A roll with the other camera. But I've got the, I went and picked up the Air Peak this morning. Um, I picked it up a picture line, uh, a couple of things that are interesting, and I'll I'll go ahead and share what I know about about this. And I've been trying to gather as much information as I can because uh, I'm a little nervous about it. So you know, Sony's real first attempt or first foray into drones, and um, and there are a few things that are concerns for me, especially when you're looking at uh, you know really probably I I think I'm. $15,000 into the drone and the gimbal and the batteries. I bought uh, a couple extra sets of batteries. And then on top of that, I, I paid for the three year, um, basically it's like Apple care or DJI care or whatever, where, um, if I crash it, I can get it replaced for cheap. I don't know if that covers the camera cause I don't know that much about it. They said they're going to send me like the application today to enter the serial number and all that in there. Um, the things that I'm concerned about on this drone are, uh, battery life is pretty low. The, the amount of, uh, oh, by the way, I'm not going to do this formally enough that, I mean, if, if my, uh, phone rings, it rings and, and I'm going to take it if I have to, cause I'm right in the middle of the work day and we'll put a pause on here, but I, I think we're good besides that. But the, the things that I'm concerned about are the battery life. It says uh, it'll run for about 20, 22 minutes if it um, doesn't have a payload. But the payload means no gimbal, means no camera. It has a pilot camera, and it has the ability to do a two-man op where you have a uh, you have somebody that's running the camera and somebody that's running um, the drone, that's flying the drone. So the pilot will fly the drone, and you can flip the camera around behind it and or, or track past somebody where the drone moves forward and the camera moves like this. I've got my Inspire 2 here. I'm used to that. I've done two-person ops. I, I, I'm used to that um, type of filming. This, like the Inspire 2, has a second camera. The concerns for me are battery life because as soon as you put the payload on, and the payload includes the gimbal, you can do about five and a half pounds, and as soon as you put that on, it drops the flight time to about 12 minutes. Um, I've talked to Japanese pilots that already have these because they've, they've had them out for, oh, I think set, 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 since September or October in Japan. And I think they're a little frustrated with it. I've, I spent 90 minutes on the phone with representatives, not from picture line, which is my camera store, but actually from, uh, with, with a couple of the guys that are going around and have been demoing this at, at different camera stores across the country, my camera store didn't have them come and do a demo. Um, there are only 10 camera stores that carry this. And so I, I know that Sony is actually really kind of nervous about their liability as far as this goes. Um, they made sure that somebody at every store that is selling one of these has a uh, Part 107 license, actually. I guess they're saying if you're selling one commercially, we want you to be licensed to use it commercially. Um, I've had my part 107 license. I'll renew it again in uh, September and that'll be my six year, my third time um, renewing it. So I've, I've had it for a long time and I've got quite a few drones and a lot of flight hours on them and stuff. So um, the, the thing that this, a couple of things that are interesting is, is with the batteries. Um, when I was talking to Sony, they acknowledge that they've got a problem as far as the batteries go. And the way they described it to me is they said, Sony is a very green company. And because of that, um, the battery tech that they're using here is pretty green battery tech. It's not with DJI, surprise, surprise. The batteries for uh, Inspire, I've got some here, um, are about this big. And if you look at the weight difference, now I've already opened up a couple, this battery is lighter than this battery is, as far as I can tell. Um, I, I, I'll actually, I've got a scale right there. We'll pull it out and check it out. Um, the, it's bigger than, than this one is. 
Um, this is lithium ion, and I think this is lithium polymer, lipo. So uh, that's that's some of the difference. Um, and and uh, I know that they've gotten enough of a hard time that they're reformulating the battery chemistry. I got two extra sets of batteries, and I had planned on getting some more. I decided, well, if it's only 12 minutes, I need some more time. Um, I, I'll get some more batteries, but then... Um, after talking to Sony, they are saying that there is going to be a new battery tech that is coming. So we'll see new ones from the factory that have more juice in them. And they also told me, and I think they sort of told me this on the slide, but they said, we it, totally expect that people are going to be building aftermarket batteries. And uh, obviously those will carry a lot more juice. For me, if I can get up to really 15, 16 minutes of usable flight time, I'm going to feel a lot better about that than 12 minutes. Um, 15 or 16 minutes for those of us who have only flown uh, Phantom 4 and newer or a, or a Mavic, um, you know, that sounds really low, but the Inspire 1, when we moved from the... the um, X4 camera that was on there, the little golf, or the X3 that's a little golf ball camera um, that came on the front of those to begin with to the uh, in to the X5 or the X5s. Um, that was that was a, a big weight change as far as the payload goes, and it dropped the the flight time down to about 15 minutes, maybe 16 minutes for an Inspire One. I know what you can do in 15 or 16 minutes and, and you can get plenty. And for me, where I do more um, photography than uh, videography, um, I'm, I'm not really at all concerned about it. If I can get 16 minutes, I'd be really pleased. The other thing to remember is that if I stuck, you know, I've got two batteries that are more battery dan uh, uh, dense. And actually, that's one thing I checked on. And it tells you what the milliamp hours are on these things. And dang it, they write it so freaking small. All I know is that this battery has more milliamp hours in it than this one does. And you look at the difference in the size. So they're, um, you, this one actually has less milliamp hours than this one does. And so that's one of the things we know is this one, A, is physically bigger. And B, it weighs a little less and C, it actually carries less power than this one does. So I know that there's room for improvement with Sony on that. I'm not as worried, but it did lose Sony a few uh, sales of some batteries. They're expensive already. I wasn't gonna buy any more until um, I got to the point where I, I had a little bit more confidence considering they're, they're bringing more out. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing that I'm concerned about, and, and the, the Japanese pilots have really been complaining about it, is, is the uh, transmission, is how well the transmitter works. And considering that, you know, Light, uh, Lightbridge 1 came out with the Inspire 1, was the technology that they were using. Then they went to uh, Light, Lightbridge 1.5, with uh, the, I had a Matrice M600. And I think if I remember, I mean, I used to know for sure, but it's been a while since I bought the Inspire 2, but I think the Inspire 2 actually has Lightbridge 2 on it, or maybe it has 1.5 as well. And they moved to two with the Phantom. I think that's it. I think they moved to two with the Phantom 4 um, Pro or the Phantom 4 and No, it's just the Phantom 4 Pro. And then the version two is when they put um, uh, OcuSync one into the Phantom 4 Pro. So the Phantom 4 Pro version two has OcuSync one, which is what um, the Mavic, the first Mavic Pro came out with. And then now we're on OcuSync two with the Mavic 3 Pro. I've got one of those over there. So um, the, obviously over the years, the tech has changed to allow for better and better connectivity but with my first with my um inspire one and with my matrice um i couldn't get as far out i i, I did a, i mean i got hundreds of hours of chasing kids on mountain bikes um back when i, I was using those drones and um i i had 
blaze orange skins on them and I could fly them quite far away. But um, I ended up modding the remotes for those to where you put uh, a couple connectors on the back of the remote and then put a couple of big flat panel antennas on there to make it so it was very directional, but I could aim it at the drone and I could have, I mean, it, it basically, what I was using then basically, I'd say it was, was 50% more distance I got out of that. My anticipation is that if this is a problem and I've already talked to them, um, I'm going to send this drone away to have the um, the remote. I'm going to send not the drone, but the remote away to get it modified and so that it can use the Alien Tech um, Duo 2 antenna that actually will do two point, the, uh, the 2.8 and the 5.4 um, megahertz uh, bands of uh, uh, what am I saying? The 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 signal um, and and it'll boost both of those significantly. Um, you can buy one of those Alien Tech antennas directly from Alien Tech, but there's a company here in the United States that actually does them too. There's only one dealer, and I had a conversation with him last night about it. So, okay, Let's we're sort of back. I don't know if we'll cut this much or what, but um, okay. So it's interesting, and frankly, I already opened this up um, at the store. Um, the the embargo date was the twenty fourth of December to begin with, and uh, then they uh, I I didn't go up on the twenty fourth because they didn't actually get it in. They got the gimbals in at my store, but the the drones had not arrived. Apparently, they had a problem where lots of them got damaged in, in shipping as they were uh, shipping out to the Sony distributor um, who's in New Jersey. And uh, so they didn't have as many to ship to begin with. Um, and, and some of them showed up uh, late as well. So um, they, they pushed the, the release date to the 30th, which is today. And uh, they didn't tell me, right? they told me, oh, you can come get it on Monday. And then I guess my guy found out and he didn't tell me. And so I went up on Monday to, to go ahead and pick it up and they wouldn't let me have it. So while I was there, I was a little disappointed and there was bad traffic and uh, they, they went ahead and they let me go ahead and, uh, and pick it up, uh, not pick it up, but open it up in the back conference room and look at it a little bit. And at that point, um, and this is also important, um, the one of the other concerns about this, and this is an easy one to resolve, it, 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 but it's a problem, is that if you look up here, I've got two Inspire 2 um, chargers. Um, the problem with these is that the Inspire 2 charger will charge a full set or two batteries at a time. You can load four batteries into it. It charges whichever two batteries are have the, the highest charge to begin with so it can get you ready to le to fly again as soon as possible, and then it'll charge the two with the lowest charge. Um, they didn't think very hard about this, I guess, and they give us a battery charger, and I've already pulled it out of here. Um, and at the at the store, I I put two of them on the charger um, up there and had them ready for me and charged when I picked them up. But uh, the the charger, I'm gonna pull it down here. I'll just unplug it. The charger is like this, and the problem is, is that it only charges one battery, and then it goes to the other battery. And basically, so for $240, you bought half of an Inspire 1 charger as far as capacity goes, and how fast it can get you ready for um, flying again. And, and uh, so you need two of these in order to have the same capacity as one Inspire charger, Inspire 2 charger. And in addition to that, um, the Inspire 2 charger will charge the two batteries and then charge the other set. So I've got two Inspire 2 chargers, and I think they're about 100 bucks each, maybe 150. Um, so I've got two of those. So I could have, in two hours, I can have four sets of batteries ready to go. In two hours with one of these, you'll have two batteries ready to go, so one set. So they're, they're one of these charges at one-fourth the rate of the Inspire 2 charger. So um, I'll, I have another one coming, 
um, at least to begin with. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to get two of them so that they'll both, you know, I can, I mean, right now with three sets of batteries, really, I've got a six hour wait if they're all dead before I can fly, uh, before I have all of them charged up again. I could wait two hours and fly one, one more, but then I've got another, you know, six batteries in the hole. So it, it's not, um, you know, for $240, you get uh, a, a far lesser capacity. Now, obviously, things have gone up since the Inspire was released, and uh, and we're seeing some of that. I mean, obviously, the Mavic 3 um, is considerably more expensive than the 2s were. So some of it's just going to be inflation. Okay, so the drone literally just lifts out. Um, I've talked to a couple, well, I've, I've talked to GPC about building a case for this thing. And um, they're planning on it, but they haven't had one to actually measure yet. And so to begin with, I'm going to plan on, I mean, it's interesting. This styrofoam is really stuck together. It's not the, it's not the one Cheap, that. breaky stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. not the one that comes apart and puts like little pieces all yeah, over the place yeah. it's pretty it's pretty good so i, I resin kind of yeah i almost. i'm gonna just use the box to begin with but i may end up um getting just pulling this foam out until the cases are ready and uh putting it into a pelican case i mm. found a used one that will fit it for about 160 bucks that i may go pick up so well, that can work yeah okay now i'm gonna pull this over here and we're going to go like that. Um, you can see right here, this um, is, is the front. You can see where that little camera is. Obviously, it's upside down. It has um, two optical sensors here. It's got two optical sensors here. And then it has two optical sensors here. And then on the bottom, th these are for the bottom. And the, on the bottom and the top, it has um, the IR sensors as well. So the IR there. And then on each side, there's two optical sensors here and here. And then on the top, you get these ones that are here that are the, the IR sensors. The, the motors are, are much bigger than you've seen on the, I mean, the, even bigger than the Inspire motors more like a Matrice M600 as far as the size, which gives you more torque. Um, one thing that is also interesting is that the drone, I believe these batteries are 37 volts, so it's considerably different as far as that goes. See so if I can see that, if I can see well enough. And I didn't realize that's so big, it requires two batteries to run. It does require two batteries, but when you think about the size of this one compared to the Inspire 2, no. matter of fact, as long as we're out, and, and it looks like it'll sit that way. I'm going to set this down. My poor little office has too much crap in it. Um, out there. I'm going to pull, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the Inspire 2 and we'll look at the size because for something that'll carry a payload like this, it's pretty incredible. I mean, it is way, way smaller than you would think. Um, the the there's another drone that is coming out from so this is my inspire 2 and if you look at the footprint on the inspire 2 compared to the to the matri i mean to the sony air peak here They're very similar in actual it, overall size yeah right? it's like surprising and i mean this you know this is the x7 camera that's on the inspire 2 yeah. with the lenses and the lenses are all exactly the same dimensions and they do that so that the gimbal doesn't have to be rebalanced right. each time, which is kind of genius. Of but this motors. one, you know, you can put 11 different lenses on it all the way from, a, you know, the 14 millimeter that we're filming on the other camera here with on the A1. You can put a 14 millimeter F1.8 on it or you can put an 85 millimeter F1.8 on it. And so and everything in between. And obviously, you know, it depends on which one you're putting on there. Flight time is going to differ a little bit depending on weight, it, and they always that that's normal. That always happens. So I'm, I'll put this back. Um, for well, I'm going to put it down here, but I'm not going to put it back because I want to pull it out once we put the put the landing gear on. It's kind of cool. That foam actually bites into these well enough that 
it gives you a little bit of a um, pinch on them so they don't fall out. So these have a, a pin that you have to, you, you loosen this up. Make sure I'm loosening it instead of tightening it. So you loosen your little thumb screw and then you slip this in like this. Uh, this is interesting because this is a lot smaller um, in terms of the, uh, wow, that's interesting. Look at that. Oh, that's it. It's a lot smaller in terms of the carbon fiber tube than uh, the landing gear on the Matrice was, which is the other big heavy lift that I've actually owned. So I, I know those, know the way that that feels pretty well. And uh, yeah, I wonder if the tubing on this is a, a sturdier, more dense maybe tube than it, the. It may be. I mean, it's you know, I mean, geez, that, that drone's five years on. old. Yeah, you know, so so that that I think that keeps it from. Um, twisting so you know it's locked in in the, in the right spot yeah, and then you nice. tight, tighten that thumb screw up a little bit and I think, I think there okay now we'll tip it up right like this but before we put the props on or anything we're going to flip it over and work on the gimbal so now it's much bigger <laughs> yeah it's, it's a little I mean you say well it's much bigger well it is bigger but it's not um, it's it's, it's taller, tiny. but not dramatically bigger, yeah. It's tiny for the payload that it's carrying. Right, right. So um, so here's the props. So when we put the, we'll put those on in a little bit. But if you look at the, the props are, are pretty big. Um, if I look at them compared to the Inspire props, the other thing is, is this is pretty light, um, as it should be. But it's a, it, for sure, it's lighter than the Inspire 2 is. But the Inspire has the camera on it and everything, so it's a little different. Okay, so if we look at the props on the Inspire 2, these are um, T-Motor props. Um, I, I mean, we're talking three quarters of an inch longer than mm -hmm. the T-Motor props mm -hmm. on each side is all. So not, not a massive it's difference there. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, one thing that shocked me and I've, you know, I've seen pictures and stuff like that, but I, I was shocked at the, at the difference in, I mean, I, it's, it's way smaller. The Sony Airpeak S1 is way smaller than what I had anticipated. Um, it, it was going to be, hmm. um, which is awesome because for me, one of the reasons that when the X7 came out on the Inspire 2, I went and got one, is in, is because I was trying to fly a better camera, and um, so I, I was doing that with the Matrice. And when I sold the Matrice and sent all the gear away for it, including the cases and everything, it was 180 pounds worth of stuff to support that air peak. Now you don't need all of it. I mean, I had battery chargers. I had three sets of six batteries per set at a hundred and, you know, 150, 150 or 180 dollars of battery now. So, you know, mm. when you start looking at this and you're going, oh, it's, these, these batteries are like 229, I think, a piece. And you're going, holy cow, that's expensive. But, it, you know, you understand that the Matrice, although you get a little bit more flight time out of it, uh, depending on the payload, but the Matrice takes six of those at $180 a piece for the larger ones and $150 for the little ones. So they, they have a, a bigger and a smaller version. The bigger version, obviously the advantage is, is it carries more power. The smaller version are ones that you can carry as many of them as you want on the airplane. So that's why they made two different ones. Um, so, okay, back to this. So we will get this out. You know, I've got something else to mention too, is I have an iPad Pro, a nice one. Um, the remote does not open wide enough to hold the iPad Pro, which that kind of is like, well, geez, that's kind of an afterthought. Now, my iPad Pro is not the current model. It's the one before it. Um, I don't want to get the current model, but I do want another iPad Pro. The current model of the 12... 0.9 inch iPad Pro is awesome because it has that new screen, which is a thousand nits. Uh -huh. And so the brightness makes a big difference. I have the 
Is it the um, same physical sizes, or is it actually a little bit smaller? No, this is this is the same exact same form factor. It just has more like this. So is, you need the ten inch one. You need the nine point seven inch one for this to work. Well, maybe, but the nine point seven inch one doesn't have the bright screen. Oh. And so one of the things that they're talking about here we are on the thirtieth of of uh, December in two thousand twenty one, and the the new iPad Pro that they're talking about releasing is um, one of the changes with the next versions is they think that they're going to put the new screen in the smaller iPad. But this is this is my plan for this because I don't want to buy another iPad and I would prefer not to have to run it with my phone, although you can put a phone in here. It has the, mm -hmm. has the thing for the mm -hmm. phone, but th this is my plan. So I, got, I have one of these that's left over from my Mavic mm -hmm. uh, from uh, Skyreet. And uh, I, I was looking for some sort of a solution, and this is going to be my solution here, is that I'm, well, it looks like I'm going to have to, oh, maybe I can do it this way. So I have to twist that around, which I can do. And I bought, uh, okay, the, uh, what I did is I've got this little ball head. This is a small rig ball head that's just a little one, a little kind of piece of junk one, but it works. And um, I just screwed it. There's a hole that's already in here. And I'm going to put it in, that's what I'm going to do, is I'm going to put it right here. And then on Sunday, from um, from uh, uh, Amazon, I've got a, a holder that's a, a spring-loaded holder ah, that will mount on this. So I've got to tighten that up, obviously. Um, but in the meantime, um, it will, and it handles the... You know, handles this just fine, and that's probably what I'll end up flying with in the in the interim. So, um, so they've got a they've got a new app that is for that uh, specific um, for for the for the remote and for this drone. It's called uh, Sony Fly, I think. Um, let's see, <sighs> Sony. To take me to Sony Rewards. Let's see what I because I downloaded it. App Store. Oh, it's dirty. Um, and the go into this and come up here and look at my recently purchased ones and my purchases. And there it is. D, ah, no, that's not it. DJI Fly. It's called Air Peak Flight. So this is this is the app that's going to be here and that's the initial setup. So. We'll we'll work through that, um, but that's that's that one. Wish I had more room. That one back here. Put that away for the moment. Now what we're going to do is we're going to ouch. I'm going to turn this over. Um, it's interesting. I was reading the manual, and the manual says that iOS 13 will work, but um, then the, uh, everything else says that iOS 14 is required. Or it's not iOS; it's the iPad OS. If you're using it with an iPad, but with with any iOS device, it's 14 that they are saying that's the one that's compatible. So we've got this. Let's say we've got that that out. What else do I have in here? Oh, that's interesting. Who knows what that is? Another little uh, power dongle, maybe that. Huh? That one says it's a 12 volt. Uh, obviously, that's not this one. This one comes with this big, huge um, transformer on it. So, a regular charger? Yeah. And then, uh, what this is. Oh, that might be the remote. Do you think that might be the remote? Yeah, I bet that's charger that's for the remote. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. And uh, this is a, uh, a board that you use to, it's a calibration board. Uh, Inspire came with one that had dots on it. It was uh, same thing to calibrate it. I don't have that. If anybody has a spare one, let me know. I know that I can calibrate it from the app, but uh, I would love to have an actual hard board to recalibrate my Inspire 2 um, with. Let's put that back in here. Okay. Now, what we got to do is figure out... Um, uh, gimbal. Keep having more instructions. 
which was good. More receipts. I actually paid for it a while ago, and I had them cut me a new receipt that um, said that I bought it today. I wanted it by the end of the year. I need the tax write-off. But I also um, wanted my 30-day period and my warranty and everything to start today instead of, um, you know, a week and a half ago when I paid for it. So let's see what's in here. Okay, this is the gimbal mounting plate right here. Feels like that's the screws that come in a little cloth bag, and it comes with a uh, with a, a, a Allen wrench to put those on. So we'll we'll take and we'll put that on there. So that's, you're saying that this is an aftermarket. I don't piece. know that this piece is aftermarket, but it is in the Grimsey box. So the way this works is they have a a Grimsey gimbal that they had made specifically. It is not a Grims, It's not a green gimbal for, you know. Uh, the, it's not a Sony gimbal. It's actually. not a Sony gimbal. It's a Grimsey gimbal, but it's not one that they're just, uh, I mean, there may be some parts and things like that, but this is specifically made for this drone. So, yeah, of course, but Sony doesn't actually sell this? Like, Yeah, the Sony does sell it. But it says Grimsey all over the box and everything. Mm. So it's so, kind of a partnership then that they... Yeah, not only that, is that I asked them when I was talking to Sony about it, I asked them about this and they said, well, the the, the Grimsey gimbal, um, it, it, you you set all the settings from within that uh, AirPeak um, Fly app. Or what, what am I calling it? It's, I'm probably calling it the wrong thing because I don't remember. Hmm. Okay. So, yeah, see that that's the attachment. So the gimbal fits in there, and then this and this clicks. was a separate purchase. That wasn't that comes with the gimbal, right? But I'm saying the gimbal assembly was a separate purchase. Yeah, it was. It was a separate purchase, which is so bizarre to me because, like, why would you buy this drone without the ability to put your camera on it? With well, the truth is, is that I mean, th there may be people that use and adapt this drone to other purposes that are completely different from photography. So, sure. I, I mean, you know, we, we have a hard time thinking about that because it's Sony, cameras right? or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You might put a FLIR camera on it. You might put uh, some sort of a, you know, a different payload, some ag payload or something like that. Um, Japan is a, a different place as far as some of these things go. And some of the, the frustrations that the guys in Japan have, I don't know if they transfer directly over to what we're going to be experiencing in the United States as far as these goes, because, because, I mean, for example, um, over there they have the CE mark, and in Europe they do as well, and they cannot have as much power on their transmitters as the FCC allows in the United States. Mm. So um, what I don't know is I don't know if this transmitter has different guts and it works any different than the, than the um, one that they're using in Japan. I have no idea. I will know soon. I, I suspect that it's different, um, but I'm wondering if it's a software or a hardware difference because there they don't have 5.8 gigahertz. They can't use that. That's used for cell phones. Um, and so, I mean, that's one thing that, that there's, a, you know, the allocation of the bandwidth is different. They have oh. to use everything on 2.4. Um, the, the app does allow for you to, to uh, and I've never launched the app to a drone, so it, I don't have any actual experience but this is just from research that i've done but the app actually um allows you to choose the channel or it will auto choose the channel for you so that's what we're doing is putting these in there's two on each there's side two, I, was, I, was, I was wondering there's two two yep and I, i'm kind of wondering i know because i've looked for my uh, blue loctite recently and i don't know where I, I put it but i probably will unlock these later and and put a little bit of blue Loctite on them. I've got some purple. Well, at home purple. If you want. well, I've I think I've got, I think I have blue here in this place somewhere, but I don't know where it is right now. It might be out in my outside toolbox. As a matter of fact, it probably is in the garage. But oh. come on, get in there. Get in your hole. That's a. Reference. I know it's a happy get more reference. Yeah, there you go. For those who didn't know, now you know. Yeah. 
Now, here's the one thing is that I hope, I mean, there may be a front and back and I, there's a very definite possibility. Actually, I probably should pay attention to that because mm. if I'm screwing this whole thing on. Well, there's and, a control port on that yeah. side, is that? Yeah, well, there's a control port on this side and there's a, yeah, I probably should pay more attention to this. This one is, this is power on this side, USB. I mean, there's, there's little, oh. so, so as you go around, there's power. There's a USB 2, which probably hooks to the camera. Then there's the old USB. Oh, yeah, USB C, USB. Okay. Yep. And then on this side, there's the uh, control um, cable, which means that. You might have to rotate it. Yeah. I, so, of course, you know, over. Over. So I, you know I'm going to run out to the garage real quick while we're doing this and uh, see if I can get red Loctite. Okay, we, uh, while we were not on, we put all the screws in. We dipped them in a little bit of uh, blue yep. Loctite, put them in down there. And then this is the Crimsy Gimbal. And um, this, and this, and that. That's the gimbal itself. It has a double layer here, so I'm going to look underneath to see if there's anything in there that I'm missing. Nope. Okay. So that's the other thing. I think that's the camera mounting plate. So I'll put them back in here. It has a one-year warranty. From everything I understand, I've got 30 days. That is really nice to make sure that everything works. Um, and I'm happy with it. As long as I don't crash it and can return it in the same condition. Um, if not, um, the so they give you some different options to buy the DJI Care, but the DJI Care is like, I mean, it was like twenty one hundred dollars, but it's three years, and I don't know what it covers. I don't know if it covers like the whatever you're flying on it too, but um, that that's a bit of a concern. But let's see. Um, okay, looks like that's the way. Nope. It's got a mark on the side. Yep. Of it. This is see. There's a mark right here that matches up to it right there. Yeah, yeah. And that mark is. Here. I was watching. Or the other side. I was watching a guy, a Japanese guy, put his together, and uh, he he was trying to do it from the other side, and he could not. Oh, here, uh, he yeah, couldn't here match here. that. Like like it was like the low camera angle. You could see. Okay, that it looks like that, but that's where it, that's where it snaps to. So it, which is interesting because that's probably what his problem was. Let's see, one of these is a little longer than the other. So this, this goes like that. Uh, he's trying it from upside down, which is like, oh, that's never going to work. Okay, so there's, there's the slot. These are thick marks which just line up and then they would... Oh, I see. It probably drops it into it once it gets there. So, and the truth is you're almost never going to take it off. So once you get it there, you're okay. That's funny. See, on this side, there's a slot and yeah. there's the two pins. Um, so the, the two pins, I wonder if, wonder if you have to actually twist this into... There we go. See, I wonder if it starts that oh. way. Yeah, so, so that's the that's the locking mechanism. Uh -huh. So that's probably the struggle he was having. Yeah, that's what he was having because he was upside down trying to you know so so it's ah, set up the correct way instead of upside down like this. I felt it lock. So we're, yeah, we're so there. that's the key, guys. You have to unlock this. This is the lock color down this on the mount plate. So you have to unlock that, then plug it in, then lock it in. Yeah, twist it. So yeah, okay, okay. And then this is probably the the. Yeah, this is the plate that the put on the bottom of the camera. So we'll deal with that in a minute. That's interesting. That one mm. looks pretty dang standard. I wonder if we'll be able to drop that in. I mean, it's it's a longer one, but it looks like it has a standard dovetail on it. Um, yeah, I think that's going to slide, slide in here, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And then this goes. This one goes. Um, you loosen oh, that, that up. Goes that goes on in the okay, hot shoe. Hot shoe. Okay. Yep. So. This one, so, let me get this hmm. one. so pretty minimalistic cage, very, yeah, and, but you've got a bunch of cords that have to go into it too, so. Yeah, now you got to plug all that on down there. That's very interesting. Um, 
makes me wonder, where's the cables? So apparently we don't have enough cables out yet to, to attach to everything. These are not cables. So that's interesting. Don't know what that one's for. Maybe to go on the bottom as well. Must be another mount. Wonder if we've got some more cables in here that we have missed so far. Oh, look at this box. Nope, that box is completely empty. Double check. Nope. Hmm. Okay. Who knows? They could be in the other box too. So maybe they could be in the main drone box. Maybe. Okay. And I, I pulled this all out, looked underneath here, and everything, just for this very reason. Yep, not there. Not there. Mm -hmm. You would think they'd give the power cables and stuff for the gimbal. You think? Because if people are not going to buy the gimbal with that, why would they need the cables? I don't know. Maybe the box. But it's... we've got one cable that, that came out of the gimbal box. And we've got more cables in here. Okay. Yeah, yep. that's kind of bizarre. Okay, here we go. Funny, because they actually do ship separately. Yeah, so it's totally bizarre to me why they would do that. So there is a USB-C to USB-C. Okay. So there's a USB-C to USB-C, but these, oh no, that's a USB-A to USB-C. And I know it takes, I think it takes both of I those. I think it does take both because there is an A port here and a US, two USB-Cs and you need the power cable too, which is that yep. four pin. We've got, this is the four. No, no, this one. Sorry. This is the two the, pin. Oh, that's two pin. So that's the power. Oh yeah, the two pin, yeah. So yeah, so power will go there to there. This is the and control. Then you got USB-C and USB-A. It's a control cable. And that goes to... Oh, and that's the control cable. Where yeah. does that go to? Well, it's got to plug into the other side of the... Uh, there's there's these down here. So, so this is ground and 14 volt and auxiliary. But this does not go down to that. This, right. I think this has to plug in... Oh, this plugs into, into the, the drone. drone. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's got to plug into the drone. Okay, so where is it plug into the drone? Is there not a cable connector down there? And there is. It should be yes, straight down is. here, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I'm going to need my little flash of light. So you get the control cable going to that control. Where's that point at in the drone? Yeah, it's right there. You got it. You got it. It's right, it. it's right here. So yep, there you go. There's that one. This is the other one. Yeah, that's going to go from there. To there. Okay. okay, so gotta make sure get the cable side right. I'll tell you what, this is a heck of a lot easier to put together than that um, Matrice was. Oh, I bet Matrice is, Matrice is a lot. Pretty much like a Lego set. It's like a yeah. complicated Lego set, huh? Yes. <laughs> and then so now you gotta flip it around and put the power in the yeah, USB C. I, well, this one, cable. this one goes right there too. So this, oh, it does. Well, there's a there is a the little USB. Because there's on a this micro side. here on this side. There's one on this side too. Look. Oh, is there? Right? Yep. Yeah. Oh. I don't know if that's the same thing because these line up well, USB C but, to micro. No, right? see, I mean the other thing you've got is you've got to put it into these. So, but these are yeah. like these are going to plug into the camera. Yeah, they probably are. And I don't know that you actually need them to run on the camera. In most cases, I think most of what you need is right here is just the USB. So that USB to USB, that's right there. One of these. This goes to the camera. This is about oh. it. But then the, what, are, what are the two USB? I'm sure those there. do too. So what we should probably do is pull. Because here you've got yeah, here you've got power and the power here. So that plug's obviously gonna go there, but then you've got two USBs and then two USB C's here. So that's that's a lot of adaption I think you can do. Yeah, let me find the... maybe, maybe they build a bunch of extra export uh, you know ports to, for future proofing kind of thing. Yeah, I don't think so. I think all those ports are used. Because this power mm -hmm. plug is definitely going to go in here. And then down to the other one. Obviously, one of these is goes from... Actually, that probably goes from there to the 
to the iPad, although that is not an iPad. That's not mm -hmm. an iPad compatible. No. So um, there's a power pin. Yeah, that for sure goes there. there. Okay. Here so you cameraman go. is now getting hands on. Yeah, so there's a power cable, and then we already got the control cable. And that's all they say about that. I guess the rest are just going to be camera. Wow, okay. Oh, all this, this says USB Type C aircraft gimbal. Yeah. Oh, so you do use one. That's funny, it doesn't actually show you Where plugs to get in. Which one is it? It just says USB C to USB C aircraft to, kim to, cam to gimbal. So you, you do do one of those. Okay. Which I'm Let's guessing is this here. one here, USB C to USB C. Turns? Nope, looks like a straight, pl straight plug to straight plug. Okay, but I don't know. That one's probably for the camera embedding. Yeah, we need to know more. Because it goes. It's a USB C. Right here, right? Yeah, right. yeah, it's USB C. Just, it's, if you have a straight one. So these are the two on the back. There's the power mm -hmm. cable. USB C is the one that is the next one around that is towards the rear yeah, from the USB C. Yep, yeah, yeah. One USB C on the gimbal and one, two USB Cs now on the aircraft itself. Okay, but this goes USB-C from there to the gimbal. Okay, so I've got, it's probably this one. Yeah. Oh, that one's still an angle. It's not a straight. That's true. You don't have a this straight This is plug? probably to the side. Oh, that's the straight plug there. This is from oh, the man. gimbal to the camera. Okay. This one is probably, but this is not, this is not USB-C to USB-C. Hmm. And that's, that's the micro. Am I? To, I wonder if it's to that micro there. I don't know. Let's see, there are. But it only shows three plugs in that illustration. Control. So. Oh, this one is not USB. That's a micro HDMI out out of. This one is not US. That's that's micro HDMI oh, right there. Oh, okay. So, um, which is the one also the seems like that would be important. Power cable. In order to see what the camera is seeing, so something's going to be carrying that. Yeah, it is micro. It is HDMI. Okay. So the other one's a USB on the other side. I wonder if this goes to the camera. I think that goes to the camera. Probably. I think this goes from here to. So it's the one right next to the power cable. Yeah. So yeah. Those, those ones. ones for you. I think maybe that's it. So I think it's this goes to. And this USB right here to that one right down there. But that one's an HDMI down there. These are two USB C's down there. Okay. You see there? How in the world do you decide which USB C to put it in? Oh, one is USB. I can see that on one. The other one is EXT. So the other one is not the same. Well, the illustration doesn't show this plug. It shows the straight plug. Well, where's the straight plug? Right there by your belt. Okay. Yeah, I think that, that's much shorter, too. Yeah, I think that's the one you want. Yeah, for the gimbal itself, control-wise. Yeah, it and the next step is to get these camera. Mm -hmm. I think the next step, let's see. It says loading battery packs in the aircraft, connecting the cable. That it goes from the USB-A port there to um, the mobile device port, which is interesting. Because that means that I probably doesn't come with the right cable for, um, let me turn this around. You have to work on that side to mount the camera. But um, that means that we may not have the right um, cord to go, I probably need a lightning cable for this. I 
which I think I have one. It's pretty new. So, so this goes here. This is just a lightning cable that I've had. Oh yeah, from USB A. That makes sense. USB A mm -hmm. to micro to the lightning. Yeah. So that. I think we're going to get to the point where we're actually going to need it on. And then we've got this one. It's this camera. This is the. You gotta uh, take your L bracket off. Yep. Gotta take the L bracket off. And we have another bracket that is specifically designed for the air peak. Makes me kind of wonder if. Huh. I'm loosening, putting the loosening one on rather than. So this is the bracket you're going to put on, right? Yep. To... Mm -hmm. okay. Somebody was telling me the other day that they thought that the the 24 millimeter lens hood was tight. I said, you know what? It is kind of tight. So, let's see, I think they're basically identical, front to back. I don't know. So one of the problems we're going to have to have is that does need to be movable because you're going to end up. Yeah, you know, shifting it forward and backwards, yeah, right? Yeah, you gotta find that balance point. Yeah. Okay. Bring this around. Pull that out. This goes in here. These extend up to there. Ah. somewhere but we don't know where it goes gonna go yet because we haven't balanced the gimbal yet. Let's see though. Uh, I want to make sure that this goes in the right side. You, yeah. Oh, I see. Got it backwards right now. There you go. Is it tapered at all or is it just standard yeah, it, it's square? It's tapered. Has a front and back. Okay. Not only that, it makes it so that the, like where where this sits on it is a little different um, depending on if you look at that, it's see how you can see it's tapered. So, oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. That is that's the front, I think. So, well, that's not that easy. Of course, now this whole thing slid forward, so. Okay, pull this whole thing out. Make sure that we got this right. This is also, it's been tightened a little bit, so that's a problem. Okay, so what I want to do is tell that's the front. Right there. So, hey, work that's first and then do the bottom, maybe. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I was thinking. Make sure that this is in. It's not.
that's kind of difficult. You got to do kind of both at the same time, don't you? You can't. You can well, focus on the top, but you still got to get the bottom. I yeah, that's kind of true. slid in there too, huh? But I think I think I can go like this <clears throat> and slip it in from the back because I think I have room to go backwards in a way that I don't have. So, I don't know, maybe not. That's really interesting. This is where oh, hold on, look at that, it came off. I don't know that that's a good thing either. So nice. That's oh, maybe nice. that's what you should do. Maybe you should just as a tip, maybe you should put that thing in the hot shoe first, then slide it in, then put everything on top of it, and then screw it on yeah. because it that seems like it's kind of pain in the butt to do it all attached. The, that the reason that it's important is like right here. I can, I mean, the reason this is important is because, like, right now, that just moves. Like screw, yeah, it just twists. Right and so I'm going to get a <clears> screwdriver <throat> and tighten that up just a little bit. But um, you, you need that top one in there so you don't get any shifting. You're right. You're right. Okay. So I'm going to put it in like this. Okay, it's about right. We're gonna get this all the way in. We're gonna get this in like this. Yay, that works. There you go, that's... Looks better. Yeah, but obviously we're gonna slide it back because I can feel already yeah, that's that it's loose on. I mean, that's front heavy. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna need to take this. I know we're gonna need that back. We need that. Slide the whole camera back. That's probably too far. So we got that. It's pretty close. I don't figure out the rest of it. Um, it's interesting because how do you get it right to left? I don't know. Well, oh yeah, there's no right to left adjustment, is there? No, but there, I mean... Oh, but there is on the gimbal itself. Okay, higher up, so... Okay. Yeah, you... you this is... Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, and then difference. there's the bot. Yeah, that gimbal base, too. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's interesting. What we need to do is go through the balance the gimbal um, thing, but I don't know what's next. So, loading, loading the battery packs in the aircraft, probably important. Yeah, I'm look at that. I'm they haven't even put the gimbal on yet. Here, see that? Yeah, yeah. So we're we're ahead of where they are. So, in a weird way, we probably need to go ahead and push that twist and get it off. Yeah, they probably want you to do some kind of like a pre-flight turn on, huh? Yep. So we're gonna take this one, and where's the other one? There it is. So I'm gonna come around here, Brendan. You can see how these slip in. Mm. And this one. So. They were saying something about how, like, there was yellow that you could see. That, like, here you can see where the batteries mm -hmm. are full or mm -hmm. not, but they said that there was a yellow on the other side. I think that's interesting. I didn't see anything that was yellow on the other side. So that was, I'm going to look at that. Yeah, see, I don't see anything. Hmm. I don't know how anybody would get them confused. That, you know, that's on that side. Right, but, right. The teeth, so. Okay, so there's that. Now they want us to link. Link the remote. Yep. So the battery, I mean, this, this is how you turn the remote on right here. You take this. Obviously, we need to tighten this up. This they, It's designed to use a coin so you can just right. get one in the... Show me your face. Okay. That's all right. We're going. Um, 
You gotta love how the phone doesn't react to the uh, no. landscape portrait orientation. Unless you do, you have it locked. I don't think so. Next, sign up. Sign in. We have one. Okay. Here we go. The Sony Air Peak Professional Drone is now back in stock at B&H. Oh, that's good, b &H. Thanks for the update on that. <laughs> Firm initial setup. Okay, charge the battery packs. Yep, we got that. Connect the cables to the aircraft. I think we got those. That's, this is great. Okay. You know, that's all we had to do is, like, wait. Okay, that one and that one. It goes, okay, so it's ready for the gimbal. Let me make sure I've got the right ones on there. Yes. Yeah, those all look Yep, they're good. in the right spots. Okay. Oh, I see. So it's doing a little mini tutorial. Yeah, just showing you how to do it. So we did that. Yep, done that. By the way, you don't have to do that in order. We just found out we don't because we waited and put the cables on. There's enough ability to get into those before the... Um, okay, finish. Aircraft assembly is complete. Start. So here it is. Connect the mobile device to the remote controller. Got it. Got it. Um, got that. Turn on the aircraft. It's on. I think it's on, actually. I don't know if you actually turn it on. It's true. I don't know if it is. Um, this, rather than doing a double push, you do a single push, but you hold it for two seconds. Yeah. Yeah, I can hear it. No, it's on. Okay. Status is lit up green. It is. Start link. Press and hold the link button for two seconds. Oh, there you go. Confirm that the status LED on the remote control is blinking cyan and press and hold the link button on the aircraft for two seconds. I see. That's not cyan. So don't press yellow. So there is a link button right here. If it's right next to the right next to the back here, there's a Did you actually do the power button? Yeah, I pushed the power button instead of the little link button. There you go. It's now cyan. Oh I see. Oh they just couldn't say blue. They, they right. should they should say that it turns cyan after, after it's linked. Yeah. That's linked. But it, it doesn't say that. Awesome translation, maybe. Yeah, you know, there's been a bunch of that, so start using. It wants you to have the mobile device connected to a network during setup. Right. So that means if you're trying to set one of these up where you don't have access to the internet, you're screwed. Right, which is another thing I'm not particularly but happy I, about. I think but once, you, once you're there, you're probably fine. But I... But I'm guessing the majority of people are going to be setting this up at home or in an office when they have internet connection and all that stuff. So You can check how to prepare for the flight from the setup guide. So that's what we're going to do. We got that. We got that. Set up that. Install the gimbal and camera. Adjust the gimbal. So I think we've got that. Um, obviously, um, with the adjusting the gimbal, what we need to do is find out Insert the battery in the memory card into the camera and change the settings as follows. Settings names may differ depending on the model. Refer to the instruction manual or help guide. PC remote function is on. Control smartphone is off. USB power supply is off. <clears throat> so we're going to turn the camera on. Go to the menu. And this is the A1, so the menu is a little different. So we're going to look for uh, down here, which is going to be this one, I think, right here. Smartphone connect. <laughs> that's interesting because that's the ILC, the A7 
S S three yes S three. So it has the old menu. So we got to turn um, so control off with control the on. see remote settings, remote shoot settings, PC remote function is on. PC remote function is off. Now it's on. Uh -huh. So what we have to do is go back out here and go to the smartphone connection, turn it off. Yeah. And then you go down to the PC remote function right here and turn it on. It won't turn. It won't turn on unless this is like you can't have both of them. So. And then we need to turn the USB cell power supply off. USB remote controls off. There's the USB power supply. It's there. These are menus that you I don't normally use, right? Right. So, so they're hard to find. Bluetooth remote to control, it. location information, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. Bluetooth function, pairing, display device address, that's all we need. Um, nope, network option, nope. Let's see if that's going to be in there. Is it in there? Custom setting, nope. Display option, power setting option. Auto monitor off, power save start time. Auto power, oh, here we go, USB power supply. Okay, and then menu. So we've got those. Now, attach the gimbal to the aircraft. Confirm that it's turned off. So that's important. Yeah, it's kind of funny to make you turn it all on, but then you make sure you have to turn it off for the input because you don't want to hot plug that thing in. Mm -hmm. Not a good idea. <sighs> from there, you can line up those. Yeah, there you go. Line up those things. Now that you've got see, the it's thing not. twisted. You, 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 no, you twisted it off, so it's in the right, it should be in the right place, right? Okay, there you go. And then this clicks. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Okay. And then attach camera plate and hot shoe doctor. We've done that. Attach the camera to the gimbal. We've done this. Connect the camera to the gimbal using the USB cable that suits the camera's port. I huh. wonder if they gave us two of those. Um, okay, so. Ah, uh, yeah, that's what they did. A couple of different options there for the cables. So this is the USB port that we're looking at, which is right there. wonder if it's going to work better to go up here. No, it's not because it's not going to be long enough. Yep, like that. Probably important that we do it this way because yeah. you've got to balance it with the camera on and ready to go. So we've got that. And that looks like it makes sense there. Gimbal and camera adjustment finished. Now we got to adjust the gimbal. Adjust the position. Okay. So I think it says, take care when adjusting the tilt axis. Please hold the gimbal lightly when making the adjustment so it doesn't roll to the left or right. Well, of course, it doesn't roll to the left or right, but I think that's because... That does pretty good, actually. I don't think we're ready yet. I think... I think you got to do the forward and backwards, probably. Yeah. Okay, we gotta make it so that it likes to go this way, which is interesting because look at that, it's it's too tall. So we are too high, so we gotta drop this this way. Ah, okay. Actually, done one that's just like this, but I mean the 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 gimbal that was on the on the Matrice was very similar, right? So. No hood. 
No hoods allowed. Ooh, too much. Looks like right about the tunes, maybe. It's about right. Just a, yeah, that one's still a little bit, huh? Wow. Adjust the balance by loosening the fixing lever and sliding the roll access adjuster. Is that? It must be this one. That's interesting. So it should be facing forward and not up. Yeah, that's what they want you to do. But it is interesting. Just vertical orientation of tilt axis. Front to back. Got the tilt adjusted, right? Picture of the center of gravity for the tilt axis. Which means what? It's about right there. But what I wonder is, I wonder if you're supposed to be, like, I don't know where, where this one ends up, like. That. See, I don't know what the difference is if it's all the way up here versus all the way back here. This one, and to adjust the tilt axis, which I think we got. I think that's right. Then go to the next one. This is the front to back orientation of the tilt axis, which is so means that we're going to bring that forward a little bit, yeah, so the lens is facing out, pulling so it down some. It's pretty good.
you want to you want to easily be able to rock yeah up and forward mm -hmm. fairly easily right yep and we're about there we're we'll kind of hold this own in between hmm he wants it facing up Ready to choose. Okay. I think we're there. And actually, that one is if you tilt it, that's what this one up top's gonna be. Oh, look at that. That tipped on its own. Nope, it's okay. So if you tip it this way. Oh, it does pretty good. Yeah, I think we're about I think the right. default setting is decent on that. Turns a little bit that way, but which means that probably needs to go backwards just a little bit. So it means that. So now it's tipping when I tip it back. I don't know. Maybe pinch more just to make a happy medium there. Okay, that seems legit. Seems pretty good. What that's for? It's just an extra for maybe a different type of option. Mm, I wonder if it's for a. Uh, like a A7C? Maybe, yeah. Now tune the gimbal. Okay. From the main flight screen by selecting settings, gimbal, and main tuning. Finish. Okay. Show flight screen. Turn on the gimbal. Turn on the drone. He looks happy. Looks happy. And I see so picture. We go up to settings. Oops. Hey, look. Update available. Probably ought to do that. Yeah. I'll spend the next half an hour doing updates now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. And we'll cut to after the updates. Look at that. 